We're going to take a look at a few genetic engineering and biotechnology techniques at this point. The first of which is PCR. Yes, the polymerase chain reaction used to amplify or make a whole bunch more DNA. The animation that we pull up here is basically going to do a better job of explaining this than I ever could. You have a strand of DNA, you heat it so that it breaks the hydrogen bonds, and then you allow these small primer regions to attach. These are going to be at known sequences at the beginning of the gene of interest. Now, a special enzyme called TAC polymerase is then going to synthesize DNA at this higher temperature, a strand that is complementary. Notice that it doesn't necessarily stop at the end of the gene. You heat it again, they separate, breaking hydrogen bonds, and then you allow more primers to attach. Notice how this time we're actually going to get first DNA that is only the gene. Now the original two strands will remain being very long and unhelpful, and the second two strands will remain being longer than they need to be and kind of unhelpful. But at this point we start making strands that exist only as the gene we want to look at. Until after a few rounds of this doubling process, we can have millions of copies of the gene of interest. So that's called the polymerase chain reaction, and it's a technique that is used to make more DNA for use in forensics and crime and things like that. Gel electrophoresis creates those little sort of line plates, and gel electrophoresis works on the principle that you have a amplification of the DNA using PCR so that you have enough of it. And then restriction enzymes are going to cut that DNA at known points into fragments. Fragments that should be a unique length depending upon the person that they are being cut from. You put them into the negative end of a well, a PCR uh, gel electrophoresis plate, sorry not PCR, gel electrophoresis plate. You turn it on and the current which moves from negative to positive will, using the charge of the DNA, pull it down towards positive Smaller strands move faster, longer strands move slower, and again, this is utilizing the length of the DNA and the charge of the DNA. So as we can see here, if this was the original starting point, this fragment is pretty long, this fragment is a little bit shorter, and this fragment is the shortest. And it will create a unique pattern that allows you to match up if DNA fragments are similar between an unknown sample and a person that you may want to convict of a crime. We can also look at this thing called a DNA microarray, which is really cool. Basically, you have a small credit card sized object with DNA or RNA attached to it in known spots, and you also know the sequence based uh, on what that spot is. You separate out somebody else's DNA, you wash it on the plate, and what you'll get are certain places where they hybridize, or the two strands of DNA connect with each other because they are complementary. That is going to create regions on a little scan like this where you have regions where they've hybridized and regions where they have not. And by logic, you can then tell which genes that cell is using at this particular time. So maybe normal cells use a certain number of genes that attach at certain points. And then a cancer cell would use a slightly different set of genes that makes it cancerous to uh, assist with research. Gene transfer works by, again, using restriction enzymes to cut out a gene at a spot that you know. That gene can then be reinserted into a bacterial plasmid using ligase, and then inserted to a host cell or a vector. This could be a virus or bacteria or a fungus. And the reason that you were able to reinsert it is because you used the same restriction enzymes to cut the original plasmid. Now you have inserted that DNA, and that's called gene transfer. You can use this to get insulin into bacteria, uh, thereby providing folks that are diabetic with a source of insulin um, that is relatively cheap and effective because the bacteria are producing it because they have a gene that we have. And also, it's worth looking at how you can clone things. Um, if you have a donor egg cell from a donor parent that you are not cloning, you can remove the nucleus. You can also use the nucleus from the donor and reinsert it into that egg cell. If they fuse and they take, which is a more complicated process than I'm making it up to be right now, you can use that viable egg cell to be implanted into a mother, and that mother, if the uh, sheep makes it to term in this case, 
would be born and is completely identical to the original donor, and you have effectively created a clone that is not the same as identical twins and people, those are clones, or as certain types of cell division, which also produce clones. This is an artificial clone. 